evening on the theme or the topic, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. You will understand where the term, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross, comes from when I go through my introduction and this evening. So, Father, I want to thank you again. Another evening we come into your presence to worship and to magnify your name. We've come to break bread. We come to share your word. So, Father, we lift up our hearts, we lift up our minds to you, clear our minds tonight. That, Father, whatever your spirit has, Lord, to impart to us tonight, that we will be receptive to it. Lord, these are your words. I pray that you will breathe upon them another time, that they will be food to the souls of your people. Me, I am a clay. God, break me, mold me, fashion me. Use me, but don't refuse me. Lord, have your way with us tonight. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. The story goes that one Sunday after church, the 18-year-old Isaac complained to his father about the so monotonous way Christians sound in English-speaking churches. At the time, congregational singing was a ponderous affair. A deacon or clerk would first read the verse that was going to be sung, followed by the droning of the congregation, usually without benefit of musical instruments. We have that and tambourines. It was called lining out. Thus, the singing of a long song could become extremely tedious, with every line of every stanza being repeated twice. It was hardly satisfying or spiritually edifying to sing in such a fragmented way. All they sung were Old Testament songs and hymns that young Isaac turned before Isaac's father, a leading deacon in the church, snapped back, Well then, young man, why don't you give us something better to sing? <laughs> By the next Sunday, Watts had produced his first hymn. Uh, the hymn was such a success with the congregation that for the next two years, he wrote a new hymn for every Sunday. By the time he died, he had over 600 hymns to his credit. He truly deserved the title, the father of English hymnody. One church historian said, we ought to instead call him the liberator of the English hymn. Not only did he produce superlative examples of his new approach to congregational song, he also opened the way for others to follow. His hymns quickly became popular throughout England and for American Presbyterians and congregationalists. His songs and hymns were almost the only songs they sung in their worship. If Isaac Watts were alive today, and we could test his IQ level, we would probably register off the charts. At the age of four, he was learning Latin, and by the age of nine, he had learned Greek. By the age of eleven, he had added French to his, uh, his list of languages. And by the age of 13, Hebrew. He was also a student of theology and philosophy. Even as a child, he had a passion for poetry, rhyming in such mundane things as everyday conversation. I'm going somewhere. It kind of drove family and friends nuts. At one point, his serious minded father, after several mornings, decided to spank the rhyming nonsense out of his son. After spanking, a tearful Isaac replied to his father, Oh father, do some pity take, and I will no more verses make. <laughs> it seems that verse just spoke from Isaac was. Many of the hymns that was wrote, including when I surveyed the one who's cross, were controversial among the churches of his day. Though what also followed the tradition of his day and put many sound music, he also believed that one could compose hymns that reflected one's own thoughts and feelings. These hymns were termed hymns of human composure, and they stirred up great controversy. Thankfully, what did not acquiesce to the critics of his day. I don't know what he did to them. Our might not have seen such as joy to the world, or our help 
in the past, or I am a soldier of the cross. Isaac was wrote when I surveyed the wondrous cross in preparation for a communion service in 1707. Originally, the hymn was titled Crucifixion to the World by the Cross of Christ. Following the practice of the day to summarize the hymn's theme in the title. To this day, many in knowledge consider when I survey the wondrous cross, one of the finest Christian hymns ever written, and they are the very best hymn in English language. It is the first known hymn to be written in the first person, introducing a personal religious experience rather than limiting itself to the musical exposition of doctrine. What's the writing? To reshape the future of church music and inaugurate it what is considered the golden age of hymn writing and I'm coming. Using only 16 lines of verse, it paints a soul stirring picture of the Savior's death on the cross coupled with a wholehearted response of a believer in such an amazing love. When I survey the one on cross, he says, I wish the Prince of Glory died. My richest day, I count the loss. I'm poor content. I love my heart. What begins is him. But I encourage us along with him to survey the one just cross. The word survey means to consider in a comprehensive way. It implies that we need to take more than just a Jesus, which is called Christ. They all say unto 
Deutsch? Ah, wohl nicht. Well, anyway, I went somewhere off the sun, that's why you missed me. And my hand was swollen. And my age, they say, well, it could be hepatitis, whatever it is.
also carried your cross. And you speak in tongues and around all over the place. And the brother and the sister you want to be cut before.
it's not all about you. It's not all about you. We've got to make sacrifices. When I survey the wondrous cross, I see only we hope for the world. In God's hands, there is hope. I remember some years ago my daughter sang a song. Yes, there is hope. As long as Jesus is alive, there is hope. When I survey the wondrous cross, I see only real hope for the world in which we are living today. Yes, there is a lot of things going on in the world, but there is hope because Jesus Christ is alive. He is well. He's living in you and he's living in me. Are we going to walk out on the street and stop to make up Jesus Christ is still alive?
they're willing to sacrifice everything for that life, for that ransom that Jesus has paid for you. So, if Isaac, Isaac was father, had not the rhyming out of him, we probably would never have had, had a son when I severe the wondrous cross. Tonight I want us to consider the cross. Let me ask a question. I, I'm going to conclude in a couple of minutes. Let me ask a question. You're a Christian. Yes. Why do you want to be a Christian? Why are you a Christian? Don't answer the question. I want you to think about it. Because some of us become Christian because we don't want to go to hell. Unfortunately, some of us will walk to the church and go to hell. But there's hope. There's hope for us. There's hope. Tonight, there's hope. All we have to do is to take a good look at the cross. Isaac Watts is dead and he's gone, but he's left something behind. What are you leaving behind? My wish is gain. I need to count them as lost. Give up the pride and bow to the cross. Bow to the cross that went to the cross for you and for me. Jesus is worthy of all praise. According to Revelation chapter 5, 11 and 12, it says, And I beheld and heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beasts and the elders. And the number of them was ten thousand times ten thousand and thousands of thousands, saying, Worthy, in a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. So tonight, we don't have to boast. And if we boast, let's boast in the cross. Let's both see the cross. Because the cross makes a difference in our life. Stand with me. And those wonderful singers, when I saw him.
this evening. You're going to pray. All the musicians, just play, play the background with them. Why don't you pray for us this evening? Just remember, when you survey the wondrous cross, just remember the cross made you the first in your life. Jesus and um, we as people, God is speaking to us through all of pastors. 
messages and I know we pray for him, but really, let's continue to pray for him. Because if you notice, every time he wants to deliver these messages that we need to hear, the enemy tries to stop him with his throat and everything. But let us not take that lightly. When this happens in the congregation, don't just sit and look at him. Pray against it, because we need to hear this word. So we just thank God for having mercy upon us. Hallelujah. Because he's a God of a second chance. And he's continuously teaching us and training us through his servant to bring us to that place where we, should, we ought to be. So we're going to say, say the grace. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will 
will surround them with your Holy Spirit, Lord. Father, I pray you will open their eyes to see what is coming. That, Lord, that they do not wait until the enemy rushes in, but they are prepared in advance. I pray that they will draw closer to you, closer to you, that they will be able to withstand the wires of the enemy. But, Father, even more than that, we say that they are victors in Jesus' name. Because the word declares, greater is he that is in them than he that is in the world. And Father, we stand upon that promise and we trust you for that. So Lord, let them just relax in you, knowing that you are walking with them. Lord, we heard the testimony of O'Neill, that you are walking with him. You walked with your people in the past and you walk with your people now. So we bless you for them. We bless you for them, Lord. We bless you for them. Satan, you are defeated in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You said that no weapon formed against them shall prosper. Not one. Because they've got on the helmet, the breastplate, the shoes, the belt. Hallelujah. They are equipped and they are armored with the word of God. So I commit them to you now in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. And we say thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Be blessed. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I just want to pray for my pastor, this ailment that he's struggling with, Lord, in his hands, Lord. You are a God of healing. Yes. And Lord, especially at this time of the year, Lord. We think about the cross. You said that you were wounded for our transgressions. You said you were bruised for our iniquities. And you said that chastisement for our peace was upon you. And by the very stripes that were laid upon your back, we are healed. And Father, we claim healing now in the name of Jesus, in the body of your servant, in Jesus' precious name. Let it be so. Amen. 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 Thank you. Um, this is the second time this week that um, the church has asked the cross to be grateful. Um, Sharon was in Boston on Tuesday. Fortunately, I was there. And a number of people who the Lord has spoken to has called the church to pray. And we prayed. Now, after that prayer and fasting, you do think that was it. But we come to church tonight, and somebody who wasn't there is called us back to the spot where we were on Tuesday night. What I suggest is um, when we go home, when we go home, we hold our pastor up in prayer. Seriously. They talk about uh, the shepherd and the sheep and how the, the sheep is uh, scattered when the shepherd is struck. But we are holding our pastor up in prayer. Because God is speaking to his church twice in a week. And people who are not there have got the same message to the church. And Pastor says, be confident that the Spirit speaks to you. That's what he says on Tuesday. So thank you, Frank. God bless you. And those who are listening to the Holy Spirit and are responding. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Just love these two people. God has sent them an assignment for us. He has sent them here for us on the side to just love them. And the best way you can love someone is pray for them. Amen. Amen.